Hello everyone, Four DIYers here, back with another video for everyone. Now in this particular video here I'll be doing is a uh, review video on a product I just recently purchased and this product I will be using in uh, future videos. And uh, basically what this product is, it's made by SRP which is Snake River Prototyping and it is the Blur Fix 3 So Naked. As you can see here, what it basically is, it's just a housing that just snaps onto the outside of a uh, GoPro camera. Now the particular one I have is for a Hero 3, but they do make them for other models as well. And uh, what you're able to do is you're able to add your own choice of filters. Now the basic uh, reason why I purchased this is, is I wanted um, some brand name filters that I was able to put on the camera and I wouldn't have to worry about any uh, quality issues. And uh, what the main filters I am using for this is uh, a polarized filter and a mackerel or magnification filters. Now just to go over some of the specifications of the product, now as I mentioned before it is for uh, 55 millimeter uh, filters that can be adapted onto the uh, GoPro cameras. Now I believe it is available for both. I do have the exterior case on this but I also believe they do uh, make one that just goes on the camera itself uh, when you have it out of the case. Now basically with this here, it just snaps onto the outside of the case. It's fairly easy. Now it is removable as well. Um, you can use a variety of filters. Uh, that's what I like with this one here is that I was able to purchase any type of filter. Um, I noticed with some of them that do come with just the filter that clips on the outside, you're, uh, you can be limited to what's available for you. Um, and it's also, uh, this is made of a polyoxymethylene uh, plastic and it is uh, CNC machined. Now the product is available to be purchased online. I will include the uh, link to their website uh, below in the description. Um, the company is located in the USA and I was in Canada. So basically it took, uh, took about a week to ship it. Um, cost uh, cost for shipping was $20 and then uh, the product itself was $40 so it was $60 right to the front door. Now uh, they did they did do an excellent job of packing it. Uh, they did pa package it in the bubble wrap here to make sure anything wouldn't get damaged and when I did purchase it here it came in this uh, plastic Ziploc bag and uh, along with the, uh, the little housing here it does come in a case. It does have foam pads in the inside you can see and then uh, it also comes just with the lid on it here. So it comes in a small plastic case. Um, most likely I'll be keeping it on the camera at all times, it's just easier. Um, it also comes with a sticker and uh, some nylon string. Uh, I'm assuming the nylon string is for so you can tie the filter down onto the camera just so it doesn't fall off but uh, the way it does fit on the camera is very tight and I highly doubt there's even, uh, even the slimmest of chance it'll even fall off. Now, as I mentioned before, there is no modifications required uh, to mount this on the camera itself. It just simply uh, clips on. So I find the easiest way to do it just uh, is it does fit fairly tight, the clearances on it. And um, basically, once you just have it slid on there, you have to almost make sure it's perfectly right on the outside of the housing. If, you're just, uh, if you just have it twisted just a little tiny bit, it's very hard to get on. You can see it just clips on like so. Now you can see it is very low profile on the camera here. Even when you look at the back side here, it just sticks out very slightly. It's almost even with the top of the uh, with the top of the uh, clasp on the case itself. Now going around to the front here, you can see the outside here is smooth with the uh, the outer plastic surface just before you get into the uh, the lens area, and it is uh, it does have a hole in the top here and on the bottom itself so if you are doing any underwater footage I'm not sure if I will be doing any of that uh, with this but uh, it does fill up with water as well um, so you just basically have an air pocket uh, sometimes you'll have an air pocket up top so it just gives an extra hole for that um, air to escape so it does fill up fully with water so there is water on the uh, between the case itself the filter if you have on the outside and also on the exterior side of the camera
Now, as I mentioned before, I wanted a uh, housing on the outside that I was able to use different type of filters with. Now, I kind of I'm normally somewhat picky with this. I like to use a brand name product. Some of the filters that are available online, I'm not sure of the quality of them. And I know uh, some of them that are available for the GoPro are acrylic, and I have heard they do scratch easy. So what I have here is uh, just a filter made by Tiffin. Uh, I just always stuck with Tiffin because I've used them in the past, uh, especially with my DSLR, and I've always had uh, good luck with them. Now you can purchase different type of filters. Um, there are there's a variety of qualities available, and um, the price range also varies greatly too. I believe uh, this filter here was uh, twenty dollars, and then I also have magnification filters, which I believe were um, were around fifty dollars. So all in all, um, after I purchased this housing here, and I purchased the uh, the two different style filters, I was believe it was around uh, under one hundred and fifty dollars for everything. Uh, so I was happy with that. As you can see here, just basically how it goes on here, it just screws on to the, um, the housing itself. Now with this being a rotatable uh, polarized filter, it's a little hard because the outside does rotate to some extent. Um, and there is a just a small lip there on the filter itself in order to um, tighten it up. But once you have it on there, uh, you also have a grip on the outside of the uh, that housing as well. And uh, everything does fit nice and flush. You can see. I'll just give you a closer view of it here. Now you can see here when I'm just moving the, uh, the frame back and forth, there's uh, almost next to nothing for play in it. And even just pulling on it slightly, you can see it doesn't move whatsoever. Now in order to remove it, and I won't be showing, I won't be taking this off the uh, camera because it is, uh, it can be tricky. And uh, that is the only downfall with this is that it's, uh, it, it, it's a little tedious to remove, uh, but on another note with that, I can't exactly complain about that because I don't have to worry about it, especially if I have it on the camera, and I, if I do ever mount it on the car, I don't have to worry about the framework coming off uh, along with my filter. Now, in order to remove it, you do have to pull these tabs back here. There's one on the top and one on the bottom side here. Sometimes I find it's easier just to go out the one side and work your way up. And then once you get this one popped, you can then work on the bottom side and pop it back. Uh, once one is popped, it's then easier to get the other one off. So this concludes the rest of my review video. I also will be uploading a comparison video next week. And that will include uh, just what the standard uh, GoPro footage looks like, as well as what it looks like with the polarized filter, and then uh, an example with the magnification filters. Now thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future tutorial videos, as well as like my video. Thank you.